What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's Daniel, and welcome back to our video. I just got done watching the Blue Emu Maximum Pain Relief 500. Let's go ahead and talk about it. For starters, this Martinsville race was the best Martinsville race we have seen in the last couple years. In fact, I think it's the one of the better Martinsville races we have seen. 2020 this year has continued to provide some really fantastic racing, and the short track package has been able to do that. We saw a lot of being and banging on the racetrack. We definitely tonight also saw some come or goes. That tire combination that we did, they brought to the racetrack, Goodyear brought, made the racing a lot better, and tire degradation would be a major thing that played in this race. The start of the race was really, really insane. Uh, like some of the big contenders who usually are up front, guys like Kyle Busch, guys like Alex Bowman, Denny Hamlin, Brad Kozlowski, they all ended up getting trapped a lap down because they did not have the right setups. By the end of the time we got to the competition, caution, there were only like, 17 cars on a lead lap, which that's something I did not expect to see. Joey Logano at the, in the first half of this race and throughout most of the light looked like he had the fastest car in this race. He really took off. But there would be some other occasional players that actually would show up in this race. Jimmy Johnson actually for the first first time looked like he this year likes more than laps than he had led previously. He led 70 laps tonight. But his car really at the end of this race Kind of ended up falling off like a cliff, and he really never had the speed to go back and win. I think he ended up finishing 10th in this race, which that still is a good performance. And he's in the top 12, which in the points now, I believe, unless, of course, he fails post-race inspection, which that I think is really exciting. So I think Jimmy Johnson, in my opinion, he if he starts up front a lot more, he can have runs like this. And what I was waiting for tonight is see if Jimmy Johnson could have those long runs, and the long runs just didn't come at the right points in this race. So... What I was waiting for was the long runs. We didn't get as many long runs, but we only had like seven or eight cautions in this race, which that was really interesting. This race looked like to me it was going to be between Joey Logano and Ryan Blaney for the race win. But actually, the battle for the end of this race would come down between uh, Brad Keselowski, who was lapped down at one point, and uh, Mark Trex Jr., who had a commitment line violation earlier in the race as well. Marshrick Jr. would actually pass uh, Brad Keselowski with about, I think, about 150 laps to go. And he was able to pull away. And actually, Marshrick Jr. was able to score his first win of the year and his first win for James Small. So, major, major, major congratulations to James Small on getting his first win and Marshrick Jr. getting his 27th win. Finally, after we've been waiting a few a uh, few type weeks, the whole year for Marshall Jr. score wins. He's had bad luck come his way. At times, he also have not had the speed to show for it. But Marshall Jr. was able to score his first win in the 2020 season. Now, I'll talk a little bit more about the race. Like I said, the race was exciting. First ever race under the lights. That was really exciting to watch. I, I didn't think we would get as exciting a race. I thought it was going to be a really, really good race. And I was kind of ready this race was going to actually end up being canceled because of the weather. But the weather actually ended up pretty much holding off all night. And we were able to get this race in. And, man, we put on a really, really, really good show. Like like I said, multiple contenders in this race. Amar Trix Jr. was up front a lot of this. Ryan Blaney was a guy who I thought was going to go out and win this. And I thought at the end of the race he might have had a chance to catch Amar Trix Jr. for the race win. But at the end of the day, Amar Trix Jr. was able to score, finally, his first win here, and his second win of Marzal and his first win this season. And hopefully there will be many more to come. I predicted Truist to actually win. And that's actually back-to-back -back for me on getting predictions correct. I predicted the last race on Sunday that Kevin Hargo win. I picked Truex to win Marzal. And I thought that he was going to get it done. He had to fight through a lot of adversity, though. That's for sure. But yeah, I love the race really, really good. Let's go ahead and just ju go through the race results. So Amar Truex Jr. won the night's race. He had to come back from a commitment line violation, like I mentioned. Uh, it looked like he almost made it. He did not completely make it past the commitment line. He was able to push his way, drive his way back up to the front, and actually ended up winning this race tonight. The sec second place, Brian Blaney. Brian Blaney, in my opinion, he had to fight through a lot of adversity as well. He actually had a bad car at the beginning of this race. He dropped from the pole to like 25th at one point. But he got back on the lead lap, and he drove all the way up to the race league, led multiple laps in this race. But at the end of the day, he could not get it done. Ryan Blaney, though, with a really strong one in a second. I hope that maybe Blaney will finally get that win really soon. Let's see when that happens. Brad Kozlowski gets a third-place finish. He had to come back from adversity as well. 
All top three guys had penalties tonight at one point in this race and uh, finished top three, so that's good. Joe Legato finished fourth. Uh, he, had, in my opinion, probably had the best car in this race most of the night, but unfortunately for Joey Legato, he just got, fell back and never could really recover because the car looked like in the second half of this race. They didn't really keep up with the track, and they got a fourth-place finish. Chase Elliott finished fifth. Uh, Chase was about a third to fifth-place car all night. He really never fell outside of top five. He just was never up there contending for the lead most of the night. He got the second, I think, at one point, but that's really about it. Uh, Alice Bowen finishes sixth. Matt DiMenedetto finishes seventh. Really strong one for him. Eighth place goes to William Byron. William Byron was back in, like, 20th most of the night, but his key finally came to life in the second half. And a solid finish for that team. They just need to put a complete race together because they've kind of struggled this year. An A-place run for William Byron. That is really solid. Kerr Bush finishes the ninth, and Jimmy Johnson finishes 10th. Dang. I mean, because what sucks about Jimmy finishing 10th here, that car looked like he had winning speed throughout most of the evening. But unfortunately for Jimmy Johnson, the car just literally fell off a cliff in the second half. They, they never has to be. Like Kevin Harvick's. His car never had the speed at the end of the race. They fell back. I thought they were going to start driving up at the end of this thing, but they never got the speed to go back up. But 10th place, at least in the top 12 in the points, another top 10 in his final season. At least the top 10. I believe, yeah, all four undercars got top 10s. And what I noticed during this top 10 is all three Penske cars, they had the right setup in the second half of this race. And all of the Chevys, the Hendrick teams, were really strong tonight. So good runs for the Chevy and the Hendrick organizations. Bubba Wallace finishes 11th. Let me just give a shout out to Bubba Wallace in this race. He had one of the best races of his NASCAR career up to this point. To get an 11th place finish this year in Richard Bay Motors' equipment, and he's historically really good at his racetrack, got his best finish ever at this racetrack. You know, I think that is a really, really, really good run for Bubba. He's needed a run like this. Yes, he's been in a controversy recently with the whole thing going on. CNN talking with Donald Lemon. In a one-place run, best race, best one of the best races you've ever put together. You can't be mad about it. A one-place run for him. Ryan Newman finishes 12th. Chris Bush 13th. Saw runs actually for the Roush Fenway game. They were in the top 10. I think both of them actually were in the top 10 at one point tonight. So good run for the Roush Fenway guys. Uh, Michael McDowell, one of the best performances he's ever put together. He actually drove up to the top 10 at one point in this race. And he deserved a top 4. He got a 14-place finish. Can't be mad about that. Good run for Michael McDowell. 15th place, Kevin Harvick. Kevin Harvick had battery issues. As far as I can tell, battery issues throughout most of the night. A 15th place run for Kevin Harvick. Not too bad. The best rookie uh, of the race, Tyler Reddick, ended up finishing 16th. He was in 8th and 7th or 8th most of the night, and he, this car just kind of fell off a cliff. 16th place, not a bad run for your first time in Marnesville in the Cup Series. Uh, 17, Cor uh, Clint Boyer. 18 goes to Corey LaJoy. LaJoy had a top 20 car most of the day. Good job on Corey LaJoy's part. 19th place, Kyle Busch. And 20th place goes to Eric Jones. 21st place goes to Ricky Sandhouse Jr. 22nd goes to Ty Dillon. 23rd, Matt Kenseth. 24th, Denny Hamill. Denny Hamill had a really, really bad night. Uh, they never got a chance to go back. Because him, people like him and Kyle Busch got trapped a lap down. Because Corey LaJoy stayed, stay out. Because since he was like about 15th or 16th in line, if eight guys got to go back up front, and eight guys had to stay back. So, Cor Denny Hamill got 24th. John Rimacek, 25th. Uh, Ryan Priest, 26th. Daniel Suarez, 27th. 28th, Chris Rebell. That's kind of disappointing for Bell. Rookie's kind of disappointed, but it's Mars. Well, it's kind of a tough racetrack. I get it and understand. Uh, 29th goes to Cole Custer, and 30th place goes to Brendan Poole. 31st, J.J. Yealy. 32nd place goes to David Sarr. 33rd place Goes to Eric Amarola, who had battery issues like most SHR cars. Battery issues that were a big part of this race. 34th goes to Quinn Howe. 35th, Joey Gase. 36th, Garrett Smithley. Uh, 37th place goes to Austin Hill. Um, praying for Austin Hill. Hope he's okay. I haven't heard anything. Uh, he had a issue, I think, possibly carbine oxide poisoning because his uh, crush panels actually off the side of his car actually came off and I believe fell onto the racetrack. And a couple people actually hit those crush panels. Um, carbon monoxide poisoning is not a joke because of all the fumes. Got inside a car. Hoping Austin Dillon is okay, and hopefully the baby goes really, really well as well. Uh, 38th, Reed Sorensen, and finishing last in 39th place is Timmy Hill. So now let's talk a little bit more about this race. Uh, this race was a typical Martinsville race. Um, it was very good, a lot of beating and baiting. I just wish, in my honest opinion, the finish was a little bit better. The, the reason I'm not giving this a, a 9 or eight, 10 out of 10 is because the finish was not that great. 
I am going to give this race at Martinsville an 8.5 out of 10. I just wish the finish was a little bit better. But Martrex Jr., he had a car at the end of this thing. They got the car in really good shape. They were up front most of the race before they had their issues. Um, like I said, shout out to Bubba Wallace. Uh, shout out to a lot of uh, drivers who usually don't perform as well on getting some really strong runs here in Martinsville. But like I said, this is the first ever race at night race in Martinsville. Um, usually a bad race in Martinsville is still a really strong race for the rest of the season because you have so many mile and a half and cookie cutter races. Can we, in my opinion, just go to run half mile racetracks with the down, low downforce package? Please, the racing is so much better at short tracks than these cookie cutter racetracks. Not saying all of them suck. I'm just saying that I'm sick and tired of running a mile half racetracks. I'd rather have half mile cookie cutter racetracks like Martinsville than run mile half racetracks. Short track racing is so much better. I was really excited for this race. The finish, like I said, was a little bit disappointing. But overall, I thought the first ever night race at Martinsville was a thrill to watch. And congratulations to Martrex Jr. on scoring his first win of the 2020 season. So anyway, that is going to be it for my review from the Blue Emu Maximum Pain Relief 500. So anyway, I want to thank guys for watching tonight's video. Please like, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications on so you can notify when a video does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Link description below for that. And combo your thoughts on tonight's race. What did you think of tonight's race? Let me know in the comments below. So anyway, I want to thank guys for watching tonight's video. And I will see you guys next time. Take care, everybody.